Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury and Bulldog Nation, for this legal seminar, I would like to explain the civil litigation process from beginning to end in a nice summary fashion. Remember, this is just an outline. There's always many other facets to this, but I believe I'm going to cover it pretty well for you. First, all lawsuits begin with what's called a complaint. When you hear lawsuit, you hear complaint. The document that's filed is called a complaint. It's not called a lawsuit. And that is where you start a, the process, whether you're in federal court because there's a federal question or what's called federal diversity, or whether you're in district court in Kentucky for a matter that's under $4,000 in dispute, or if you are in circuit court for a matter involving real estate or more money. In Hamilton County in Ohio, you can go to municipal court for something that's less than $25,000 or greater than $25,000, you're in common pleas. But across this country, the lawsuit process begins with the filing of the complaint. In a civil lawsuit, the person who files it, who brings it, is called the plaintiff. The person who is sued, we call it sued, or the persons, is called a defendant. There can be more than one plaintiff. There can be more than one defendant. Once the lawsuit is filed, and it's filed in Kentucky, it's filed in the court clerk's office, or in Ohio, also the court clerk's office. Once it is filed, a summons is issued. This is very important. A lawsuit must be served. We call it service on somebody. Now, that summons usually has their name, and it has to be the official, if it's a corporation, they have what's called agent of service of process, but you have to make sure you do it right. The summons can be served by the sheriff, Ohio allows regular mail, or certified mail. But a lawsuit must be given notice to the defendants. The defendants must know that it's been filed against them, and that's called service. Many times, if you can't find somebody, you hire an investigator to locate them, get the correct address, track them down. You've seen movies probably where people were ducking service. Why would somebody duck service? Because they know until they're served, the process doesn't start. If you are served with a lawsuit and you don't do anything, in Kentucky it's 20 days you have to file an answer, in Ohio it's 28 days in state court, you can get what's called a default judgment against you. They file a motion, an affidavit, they say, hey, we filed this, we served them on this day, they didn't file an answer, we're going to get a default judgment. That's why if you're ever hit with a lawsuit, you got to contact an attorney. Many times, like if you're the defendant in a car accident case, the lawyer is simply going to say, turn it over to your insurance company, and they represent you. That's part of the deal. Once you're served with a lawsuit, you can file what's called an answer. And you should file an answer. That way you don't get a default judgment against you. What does an answer do? It takes each allegation in the complaint, and it says, I deny, I admit, I deny, I admit, and you can also put forth what's called affirmative answers. You can say statute of limitations. You can argue that they didn't serve the right person. You can argue all of these other things are called affirmative defenses. But once you have filed an answer, you're protected from a default judgment. If you think you have a claim against the person who sued you, you can file what's called a counterclaim. It's like a complaint. It's called a counterclaim. And when you answer, you bring it. Sometimes you'll have what's called a cross-claim. Let's say you and a business partner are sued. The bank sues you, and you think your business partner's liable too. You cross-claim. You also file that at the same time you do an answer. Now, early on in litigation, and this is what the big shot, high-paid, overpriced, big law firms always do. 
Instead of filing an answer, once the lawsuit is filed, they file what's called a motion to dismiss. Usually a big waste of time. Why? Because a motion to dismiss means that the court, believing everything that you said in that lawsuit is true, that you don't have a claim. It's a heavy burden. But you know what? They file them anyway. Why? Because it delays the process. By the way, a motion is nothing other than what we call a request. That's what a motion is. Now, after the answer is filed, there's a process called discovery. There's paper discovery and oral discovery. Here's what paper discovery concludes. Interrogatories, which is a fancy word for questions you send to the other party. Plaintiffs and defendants can send them to each other. You get to ask them questions and they have to answer them. There's called requests for production of documents. You can ask them to produce documents that are relevant. Requests for admissions, you ask them to admit statements or deny statements. There are subpoenas of third parties. Let's say you sue me, but your neighbor has information. I can subpoena your neighbor. Then there's called depositions. You've seen enough television to know a deposition is a sworn statement of a witness or a party with a court reporter president who takes it all down. Questions and answers and objections. All that's all it is. It's an interview under oath. Then that can be used. You can also get witness statements. You go out and get witness statements. You don't take their depositions. You just go out and get witness statements. Find out what they have to say. You can use them later. Sometimes you turn those witness statements into affidavits that can be filed in court. Another part of the process is, as you go through the process, you might think of something, a new claim that comes out. You amend your complaint. You can do it once as a matter of right. If you do it again, you have to do it by motion. Motions, and I've already mentioned this, but I want to stress it here. The word motion just means a request. And there are countless different motions you can prepare. For example, a motion that you hear a lot about now in these court battles of the presidential is motions for injunctive relief. A motion for injunctive relief is something that's filed. It's merely a request to stop something. After all the discovery is done, oftentimes there's what's called a motion for summary judgment. What that means is, is based upon the evidence, there's no way a party can win. Therefore, I should win without having to go to trial. Pretty standard procedure to file what's called motions for summary judgment. If you can't get a motion for summary judgment or default judgment, the court usually sets it for what's called a pre-trial to set a court date and to say, okay, what do we have here? Now, during this entire process, a case can be settled, it can be mediated. A lawsuit can be settled from the time it's before it's filed all the way to, through the appeal process. There's no rules about when a case gets settled or it's dismissed. Then you have a trial. Here are the stages of a trial. First, jury selection. Both parties get to interview jurors, and you get to pick your jury, and there's something called excuse with cause. That means based upon what the juror jury, the jury says, they should not be on that jury. For example, they say, I'm a racist, and you represent a black defendant. Well, they're out of there for what's called cause. You also get what's called preemptive strikes, which means you can strike them for no reason at all. Those are usually limited to three. There's difference depending on what kind of case you have. After your jury's picked, you have opening statements. An opening statement is supposed to tell everybody what the evidence is supposed to be. It's not argument, but you can squeeze those in a little bit. The evidence shall show. You tell the story. Both sides. Plaintiff goes first. Defendant goes second. The plaintiff has the burden. Usually by a preponderance of the evidence. Just tip the scales. Although in civil litigation, there are some standards that require clear and convincing. Then the plaintiff puts on his case. And here's when you put on your case. You call witnesses that get direct examination and cross-examination and exhibits are introduced to. Then the defendant puts on his case. Same thing. Direct, cross, exhibits. Then after the defendant's case, the plaintiff can rebut 
Anything the defendant put on through a witness, rebuttal usually is short, but you can call rebuttal witness. Then there's closing argument. The defendant goes first, plaintiff goes last, and this is when, except in Ohio, plaintiff goes first and gets a rebuttal. But you know what, folks? That's where you get to make your arguments. You get to argue your case. You get to point out things, what you think it all means. Then there's jury instructions. The court gives the jury written jury instructions. Here is the law of the case. And there's a series of questions that they answer following that law. Then the jury deliberates. Then there's a verdict, which is always in writing. Plaintiff verdict, defense verdict, how much money, if any. After a jury trial and there's a verdict, either party might want to file some post-trial motions. By the way, also before the jury deliberates, sometimes the defense will and the plaintiff will make what's called a motion for a directed verdict. That means, hey, I should win on this. There's no evidence here. But there's post-trial motions. The judge made a mistake. The jury made a mistake. Then after that, there's appeals. Then after the appeals, the verdict will be upheld or maybe even a new trial. So ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, that's an A through Z of the civil process. And you know what? That takes a couple years to take place. Unless you're a Durrani case in Hamilton County, then it might take 8 to 20. This is a Bulldog. Every dog has their day. Have a great day.